Hey guys, I'm Matt Asplund and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. In today's video, what we're going to be going over is how to hold down a button to interact or to do anything you want, but in today's example is to interact. But essentially, if you want your action mapping to fire off, you have to hold down the button instead of just pressing it. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So again, in this example, I'm interacting and I'm just simply going to open a door. So if I hold E here, I have to hold it for a second and then I interact, the door opens, hold E for a second, it closes. You can see in the bottom left hand corner as well, we've also got a progress bar showing you how much you are and aren't holding it. So I can fully do it like that. And if I had to do it and let go, you can see as well that it cancels it perfectly like this. Now I've got this progress bar on the bottom left. You don't have to have it there. I've just done that for the purpose of the video to show it off. What you can do is have it so it only appears when you're interacting or it's actually attached to the actor that you want to interact with. It's very, very simple and basic and easy to do. And I'll go over telling you how to do these different things. But again, just for the purpose of showing it off nicely and easily in the video tutorial today, I've got it in the bottom left like so. But this is what we'll be going over and creating today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how we've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to actually create our enhanced input action for interacting or again, whatever you want to do. So what I'm going to do is hold control space to open the content browser. And then for me, it's going to be in third person input actions. And then what I'm going to do is right click, go to input and create an input action. And I'm going to call this IA underscore interact. I'm going to open this up straight away. And what I want to do in here is I want to add a trigger. So you can see here we have triggers under action. I'm going to add an array element here and I'm going to change this from non to hold. Then if I open up this index zero here, what we can do is change the values in here to customize it for how we want. So the hold time threshold is how long you have to actually hold down your button to then fire off the code. For me, one second is fine, but you can change this to half a second for two seconds, three seconds, whatever it is that you want, you would input this into the hold time threshold. Then I'm also gonna tick is one shot because what I want to do is after I've held the button for one second, I want to fire off the event once. If you don't tick this, it's gonna fire off every single tick that you are still holding down the button. So if you're holding down E for a second, while you're still holding it after that second, it's gonna fire off every single frame. So if you're playing your game in 60 frames a second, it will fire off 60 times a second, which might be good for you, that might be what you want. But for me in this interaction code, I only want to fire it off once. Then affected by time dilation is essentially if you are speeding up or slowing down time in your game, does that also change the speed at which you're holding down the button? So if your game speed is increased by two, you'll only need to hold down for half a second, for example. I'm not doing anything with time dilation, so that doesn't bother me, but I also don't want it to do that anyway, so I'm not going to tick it. And that is all we need to do in here. We don't need to add anything else. I only want this to fire off once after I've held down the button for a second. So we can save and close that like so. And then next, we'll go back into our input folder and we'll open up our input mapping context, which for me is IMC default. In here, I'm gonna add in a mapping and I'm gonna add in the one we just created, which was IA interact. Open it up, press the select key value. And I'm gonna press E so that we now have this working on our E keyboard event. Now you can use any button you want, but for me, E is going to be perfectly fine and work the best. That's what I want it to be. So we'll save this and close it as that is again, all we need to do for that, that is now set up for holding E to interact. So what we want to do next, and this is optional if you're not doing interaction or if you've already got that bit set up, but what I'm going to do now is create my blueprint interface so I can interact with different blueprints. So I'm going to go to control space, go to some empty space. I'm just going to do it in my content folder, right click, go to blueprint and create a blueprint interface. I'm gonna call this BPI underscore interact. I'll open this up straight away, create a new function, calling this interact. And that's all we need to do. This is a read only blueprint, so we don't need to do anything else in here. I'll compile, save and close this like so. And an interface simply allows us to just communicate between different blueprints in a much more efficient manner than casting. So next, let's actually start setting up this code. So we'll go back into our content browser and we'll open up our character blueprint, which for me is gonna be third person blueprints, BP third person character. In some empty space here, I'm gonna right click 
and search for IA underscore interact or whatever you named your action event. Get this in here like so. And what we want to do is we want to actually come out of triggered because started will be when you first press E and triggered will fire off after we've held it for a second. So we're going to come out of triggered here like so. Now what I want to do for my code is I'm firstly going to right click and get overlapping actors with the class filter just simply being actor. Then out of overlapping actors array here I'm going to get a for each loop with break and this is going to go into triggered because this is a code I want to fire off after I've held E for one second. Out of array element here I'm going to get a does object implement interface with the interface being our BPI interact interface we just created. So this means we're only going to try and interact with an object if it implements this interface because that means we can actually interact with it because it has our interact code in it. We'll then hold down B left click to get a branch with a return value and the condition going in there and this going into the loop body. With the return value of our does object implement interface going into the condition of the branch and the branch execution going into the loop body of the for each loop. False, we don't want to do anything because if we can't interact with it, we don't want to try. True, we want to interact. So what we're going to do is come out of array element of the loop and then just simply search for interact. And we want interact message here. Now, if you don't see it, it's just whatever you named the function within your interface. And after this, we're going to go into break of the for each loop. As we've now interacted with an object, we don't need to continue searching for more objects because we only want to interact with one thing at once. And what I'm doing here as well is just double clicking the execution nodes to get some root nodes to keep them looking nice and organized. So we'll compile and save that. And you'll notice I've left a little bit of room at the start here. That's for our code for actually for setting up the progress bar, but I'm going to do that in a second. I'm going to focus on just interacting first. So now let's open up an object we want to interact with. So for me, that's a door, which I have already created. So I've got my BP door here, which simply is just a door static mesh and a box collision. And in the event graph, I've got a timeline simply animating, opening and closing the door. I'm not saying that up in this video because that's not what this video is about. I assume you've already got something you want to interact with if you're on this video. But if not, I do have videos going over how to set up doors, but it's very, very simple. You can simply just create this timeline here like so and make sure you're setting the rotation of the door. But again, I'm not going into that today. This is just purely on interacting by holding down a button. So what I'm going to do is go to class settings go under implemented interfaces and add, we're going to add BPI interact. You can see on the left now, we've got this interfaces tab with our interact function. Let's double click that to get the function. And this now is going to fire off when this code is fired off here. So what I'm going to do is out of this, I want to get a flip flop to toggle between the values of A and B. A wants to open the door, which is a function I've created. And B wants to close the door, which is again, another function I'm calling from up here on this timeline. So now if I were to compile, save and hit play to test this out, we can see that if I were to walk up to this door, press E, nothing's gonna happen. If I were to hold E, nothing happens again. But if I hold E for, that's because I let go, sorry. But if I hold E for a second, it's gonna open perfectly like so. If I hold E for half a second, nothing happens. If I hold E for a whole second, you can see we're now interacting. So that is working perfectly. However, the player can't really tell what's going on. So what we need to do is signify to them and let them know what's happening by giving them a progress bar. So let's come out of this. And what we're gonna do now is we want to create a widget. So we're gonna hit control space to open our concept browser again, right click, go to user interface, create a widget blueprint, use a widget. And I'm gonna call this one W underscore interact, but you can name this whatever you like. And we'll open this up straight away. Again, for the purpose of the video, I'm just going to make a very simple one just to have on screen at all times. So I'm going to get a canvas panel and then I'm going to get a progress bar into the canvas panel. And I'm just going to move this into the bottom left hand corner of the screen all the way down here like so. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger, perfectly like this. Then what we want to do with this progress bar is we want to go to progress percent bind and we want to create a binding. We're going to right click the return value, promote it to a variable and name this progress. We'll move this down here like so. And we're going to hold alt and left click to disconnect that. Then what we want to do is drag out of progress and get a divide. The return value of this will go into the return value of the return node. 
and what we're dividing by is the amount of seconds that you need to hold down the button. So for me, it is just one, so I don't actually need this divide. I can just plug it straight in. However, it's good practice to have it anyway in case you need to come and change it later on. And also for the purpose of the video, I'm adding it in in case you have a different time to me. So if you need to hold it down for two seconds, change this to two. If you need to hold it down for 0.5 seconds, change it to 0.5, but for me, it's just one. And this is gonna make sure that the number that we have is converted into a progress bar format. So it needs to be between the values of zero and one. Now, obviously for me, it already is, but if you're going, if you need to hold it for two seconds, that's gonna be between zero and two. So when you get to one second, i.e. halfway, the, value, the progress bar will already be full, which doesn't make sense. So you need to divide it by the amount of time and the amount of seconds you need to hold down the button for. So I hope that makes sense. So we'll compile and save that as that's all we need to do in there, very, very simple. And we'll go back to our character blueprint now into our interaction code. What we need to do first is off of event begin play, we need to create our widget. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do it alpha, out of add mapping context here because if this isn't true, then we can't interact. So we don't want to have the pro on screen anyway. So this works perfectly fine. So out of this, we will create widget with the class being the one we just created. So W underscore interact. We're going to right click the return value, promote it to a variable, naming this just W underscore interact again. And then out of this, we're going to add two viewports. That again is for me, just because I want it on screen at all times. However, you don't need to do that if you don't want. Then back to our interaction code, what we're gonna do is drag in our W interact reference here. And out of this, we're going to set progress or whatever it is that you named the variable. This is gonna connect into ongoing perfectly like so here. And we want to get it again and connect this one into canceled. And this basically means as we are holding down the button, it's gonna be firing off updating the progress and then also if we cancel it, so we let go early, it's also going to set it as well. And that reminds me, we also want to do it off of completed. So I'll explain these more in a second once we finish. So this top set progress here, what we want to do is connect this into elapsed seconds and the bottom one we want to leave as zero. I'm gonna close this to keep it organized and then move these about a bit perfectly like so. And what's happening here is as we're holding down the button, it's updating the progress to the amount of seconds we've been holding it by, which is again why we were dividing it by that as well. And then if we cancel it, so we let go early, or we complete it, so we held it for the amount of time needed, it's gonna reset it back to zero, as obviously the player doesn't need to see the progress bar still full, or at the same level it was before we let go, we need to reset it to zero. And then we can move this back over here, and perfectly, we've now got this set up. So we hit compile, save, and hit play to test it, we can now see perfectly that if I to hold E, it's gonna fill up and I let go, it stops perfectly like so. And if I completely hold it, but I don't interact with anything, it still gets reset to zero. If I go over to this door or something to interact with, hold E, you see if I don't fill it up perfectly, it's not doing it. If I do fill it up all the way, we're gonna interact and it gets reset back to zero. And this is now working perfectly for us. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we've wanted to do. What we've done today is we've set it up so that you have to hold down a button to interact or do whatever you want. But again, for my example, it's interacting and interacting with this door. And we've also got a progress bar informing the player that they need to hold it down and how much they currently have as well. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please do make sure to like and subscribe down below as it really does help me and our channel out a lot. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.